boys and girls, welcome to our first Tuesday Truth for Kids, where we'll look at the Bible together and learn how we can spend time with God every day, not just on a Tuesday. Have you ever heard a friend or family member or maybe someone at church talk about a quiet time or a devotion? Do you have a quiet time or do a devotion? Well, this is just the name that we give to spending time with God every day. God loves us and He wants to speak to us. And He mainly does this through the Bible, His Word. Every word in the Bible is from God and it is all true. We can learn in the Bible about who God is, what He does, how much He loves us and how God wants us to live. And we can learn this when we read the Bible every day. In the Bible, we see God's plan to rescue people from their sin through Jesus. And when we read our Bibles, we can meet with Jesus, our King and Rescuer, and get to know Him better. But God also wants us to talk to Him. And we can do this when we pray. We can pray anytime, any way. Right, for our Tuesday Truth, we'll be looking at animals in the Bible. Did you know that the Bible is full of all kinds of different animals? As we look at these verses, we'll learn about a tool that can help us to spend time with God. This is not the only way to do it, but it is a way that's really helped me when I've read the Bible. Before we jump into our first passage, let's pray and ask God to help us understand His Word today. God, thank you so much for your Word. Thank you that we can learn more about you and how much you love us in it. God, I ask that you will help us to really understand what you want us to say. What? Blah, blah, blah. Wow, I'm going to start my prayer again. <laughs> Gosh, okay, sorry. Oh, God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that we can learn more about you in it and how much you love us. God, I pray that you'll be with us and really help us to understand what you want to say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. So the tool that we're going to be using is not a hammer or a screwdriver. It's called the soap tool. That's right, kids. Soap is not only for washing your hands and protecting yourself against the coronavirus. Soap stands for S, scripture, O, observation, A, application, and P, pray. So scripture is the part of the Bible that we're going to be reading. O is about all the things that we notice in this passage. What words do we see? Is anything repeated? And here we try and put the passage into our own words. A, application, is where we ask, what does this mean for us today? What do we need to think, feel, or do after reading this passage? Or what do we need to stop thinking, stop doing, or stop feeling when we read this? And finally, P for prayer is where we talk to God about what we've read and ask Him to help us live out everything He's taught us. So let's read together. And if you guys can't read yet, you can just listen to me read it and you can ask your mom or dad later to read with you too. If you can read, please follow along on the screen with me. Today's scripture is Genesis 1 verses 20 to 25. This is the story of creation. It's about how God made all the animals that exist. Before this, we see how God made the land, the sea and the sky. And now we're reading about how he fills the land, the sea and the sky with all kinds of animals. Let's read together. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water and the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. 
answer is scripture. We've just read amazingly how God made all the animals according to their kinds. He just spoke and it was so. Observation, what have we noticed from this passage? Well, there are a lot of things that I picked up, but I'll just talk about a few things. Number one, we see that God made every living creature. They all belong to them. And we took that. They all belong. God. Ah. My tongue is so tired. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Observation. Okay. Oh, observation. What do we notice in this passage? Well, I noticed so many things, but I'll only mention a few things today. First, God made every living creature. Everything comes from him and everything, every animal belongs to God. We can learn about God's goodness and his creativity when we look at all the animals around us. And if people wonder if God exists, we can just look around us to creation to know that he really does live. Secondly, God made each animal according to their kind. So each animal has a specific role to play in creation and they're all unique. God made each animal to suit where they live and what kind of food they're supposed to eat. Let me give you a few amazing examples. Did you know that a polar bear's hair is not white? It's actually without color. Each thick strand of hair is hollow and it reflects the light, so it bounces the light back and it makes the polar bear look white. But underneath all that fur, the polar bear's skin is actually black and this helps the polar bear to absorb all the heat from the sun and stay as warm as possible. Another one, did you know a chameleon's tongue is at least as long as its body and it can go out and in really quickly to catch its prey. So this allows the chameleon to sit and catch its food without needing to move much. And the final fact that I found that was really, really cool is about humming, hummingbirds. They beat their wings up to 200 times per second. So 200 times, gone. And this allows them to hover so that they can eat nectar from flowers. These are just a few examples. What's your favorite animal? And how has God made that animal according to its kind? Now application, our A. What should we do after we've read all of this? Well, firstly, we can look at animals around us and worship God. We can praise him for the way that he has made all the different animals and praise him for how good and creative he is. And secondly, we can look after animals. This means your pets at home, but also animals in the wild. We can look after the environment as well so that we don't destroy animals' homes or the food that they're supposed to eat. And finally, P, that stands for pray. Let's pray about what we've read today and just thank God for all the animals that he made. God, thank you for being so good and so creative and for making different kinds of animals. We don't even know about all the animals that exist. God, I pray that you will help us to remember you when we see animals in nature and remember how good you are and help us to look after animals, their environment and even our pets at home. Thank you that we get to enjoy animals and learn more about them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, that's all for today. Join us next week for our Tuesday Truth and we'll be learning about a whole new animal next week. <laughs>